if you're looking for a good stocking stuffer for a stank mouth friend or a nasty mouth co-worker drop down in the description box click this link get some of this lucida for their yuck mouth ass it's charcoal activated toothpaste it'll keep them teeth from being yellow brown and every other ungodly color and it'll make their breath smell good drop down in the description box and get you some lucida baby Y'all can already tell by the look on my face what direction this video is finna go in. <laughs> this part two of this Real Housewives of Potomac reunion, let's just talk about it. Nessa girl, I just got through watching part two of the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion and emotionally I'm spent. And I'm gonna talk a little bit out of order because I'm just gonna speak from pure raw emotion at this point and I'll go through the show uh, segments afterwards. I'm trying to be as fair as I can in my speech because the narrative has become somehow that I hate Candace I'm biased I'm not understanding how you sat on the stage for this whole hour talked shit through jabs at somebody who was ignoring you Jumping in segments that didn't even involve you. No one was talking to you. And then all of a sudden, you fall apart. And you're crying and you can't go on. You got to leave the stage. You got to go to the back. Um, it's just too much. I am lost on. I'm traumatized and I'm bullied by this person yet I'm going to do the behaviors that got me traumatized and bullied in the first place y'all if I'm getting it wrong if I'm getting it wrong please let me know like please I, 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 I'm begging you because I, and the reason why I'm exhausted is because in my heart of hearts I feel like what I'm saying is right I truly feel like it, I'm right and what's exhausting me is that there's a group of y'all over there that just insist that it's wrong. And I, and I get that somehow people get their favorites and they just blindly follow them. I'm not understanding this. Like, make it make sense for me. You so traumatized and you hate this girl and you don't like her and you've been bullied. But yet you still is basically sitting on that stage trying to pick a fight with the damn girl again I don't get it and I'm sorry uh, you know Giselle chimed in with the, a part of what's going on with Candace is that people are telling her when she needs to get over it and the mental trauma and the mental trauma and the mental trauma and I've tried my hardest to accommodate that as best I could I honestly think that it is safe to say at this point her ass should be over that goddamn shit okay because what you're doing is fucking up that therapist's money. You don't went to therapists. You don't got pills. You don't got potions. You don't wrote sticky notes. You don't corral all the ladies on that stage to be against Monique. I don't know what else Candace needs for her healing. Like, I, I, I think at this point, Candace, if you're within earshot of my voice, maybe you should write an Instagram post and let the world know what is it that you need to heal and stop fucking crying over this. Like, my God, girl, girl, girl. And I'm sorry, you know, y'all keep talking about, it was a sister and it was a friend and a betrayal. Fuck that. I don't got it. Listen. I don't got done wrong by friends. I don't got done wrong with family. I don't got beat up in front of people before, bitch. And you find a way to move the fuck 
on with life. I don't understand for the life of me. And Candace, listen to this part of what I'm going to say. Maybe this will help your healing. Stop giving a bitch who you don't give a fuck about that much power over your emotions. And I'm sorry. I said it in a previous video and I caught a lot of flat for it for calling her weak. And y'all, 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 black women should be able to run the gamut of emotions. If she was a white woman, you wouldn't call her weak. Let me tell you something. And I'm so definitive in this stance. At this point, it's safe to say you're weak. You're weak. And it's not a negative. You can't help the fact that you're weak, but you need to figure out a way to toughen up. You need to figure out a way to toughen up because there is no reason in hell that you should be distraught walking off the damn stage the way you're doing. And moreover, you need to grow the fuck up. Candace, you honestly need to grow up. You are childish and immature as all hell. You sat on that stage throwing jabs, chiming in, chiming in, and everybody, you even said people are like, you got what you deserve because of your mouth. You still haven't learned. You still haven't learned. You are catering to your own trauma, and I don't get it. I could go, I, I'm not going to harp on this, so we just going to go, 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 go. I had to get that part out. Let's go to the beginning of the reunion. The reunion opens up with Giselle sitting all kind of uncomfortable because they were talking about her relationship, uh, her relationship with Jamal. And just, you could tell Giselle was just heated up, fired, fire running through it. It was all in the chin. She couldn't say nothing or whatever the case may be. They break for lunch. And of course, Robin and Giselle do what they do. They have to go throw shade at Monique's binder. Uh, oh my gosh, she had time to put this binder together and you bitches had time to put together what y'all put together about her at the Andy Baby Shower. I just don't understand the hypocrisy for me. The fact that people can call out negative behaviors in other people, but they don't want to acknowledge that, that they've done the same thing. See, when I see somebody doing the same shady shit I do, I shut the hell up. Because I don't want them to turn that magnifying glass around back at my ass. Too shady and too shady. I don't want the girls to too shady me. There's a lot of shades you could do to me, but I don't want a bitch to too shady me. Okay. Um, Ashley and Michael, they bring they, they run Ashley's package. And she's talking about Michael is at a wedding. Michael ain't at, and Michael ain't at no goddamn wedding. Michael asked them want to come. Michael asked on embarrassed you every damn season of this show. Been in the hot seat every damn season of this show. And this was a great way for Michael to avoid having to answer up for the infidelity. Going to that hotel room with that lady. Grabbing the producer's butt. And I'm here to tell you, Ashley. Okay? I'm here to tell you. You are one stupid, naive bitch if you think Michael did not have sex with that woman. I am sorry you don't take hookers. First of all, when you drunk, it make you want to hunch even more quiet as it's kept, especially in Vegas. He did not get the hooker or the woman, get her, get her to, to go to the hotel room, get undressed just to fall asleep. That is, the hardest part is getting the person to the hotel room. After that, baby, that dick get hard and your emotion, your, your blood start churning, you gonna finish the deal. Okay? You are stupid. And, and, and my whole thing is, actually, I wouldn't give a damn if he had sex with her or not. At the point in which you took another bitch to your room and you kissed her and took your clothes off, that means you had the intentions of doing it. That means you had the propensity to do it. That means you have the capacity to do it. That means you wanted to do it. As far as I'm concerned, you did it. Okay, so you want to get caught up in the technicality and the semantics of it all and the minutia, the petty details. And the reality of the situation is he cheated on you in Vegas in that hotel room with that damn woman. And you, 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 you I guess you finna get paid for your pain because you had another goddamn baby. And I, I got a feeling Ashley ass is going to exit pretty soon. She ain't that damn stupid. Um, Karen tells Giselle that they're rooting for her family because Andy was like, you know, you're rooting. Now, now hold on. I want to back one thing up before I get on that. I want to give out the MVP award to Ashley. And the reason why I want to give Ashley the MVP award is because unlike every other woman on that stage, when Andy calls out Ashley's most embarrassing stuff, she don't use a river of words. She don't dance around it. She rests in it. She rests in it. She answers as fairly and truthfully as she can. 
and then they move on. It's when you start hemming and humming that they start dissecting you. Never let a bitch spray you with your own tea. I've been telling y'all that for how many years? For the slow bitches in the back. Never let a bitch spray you with your own tea. So when they spill Ashley tea on the table, she sits in it, she owns it, she gives an honest answer, and you're forced to do nothing but move on because there's nothing left. But it's when y'all get the hemming and humming and shipping it in your chin, shuffling it, trying to hold up your extra chin, and, and looking around and talking to the person on the side and trying to get argumentative. That's what makes it go on even longer and make people scrutinize and dissect you anymore. Y'all need to learn, y'all silly damn jaybirds. Never let a bitch spray you with your own tea. Uh, Karen, Andy asked Karen, uh, how does she feel about Ashley? And Ashley says, well, I'm trying to, you know, put my family together and, and keep my family together. And Cameron said, I commend that. And he says to, to her, well, Giselle's trying to do the same thing. Which I think Giselle and, 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 and Jamal's situation is a little different because um, it, it's just a little different. Um, and Cameron said, well, I'm rooting for her too. If it's a real family. Drop that in the comments. We're going to take a survey right now. Do you guys honestly think, and I want y'all to answer this. Do you honestly think that Giselle and Jamal's relationship is genuine and that they are both mutually trying to move towards, you know, getting married again, moving in with each other and, and, and sailing off into their golden years together? Drop it in the comments and let me know what you think. Then I'm going to send this video to Giselle. Um, Michael grabbing the cameraman's ass. He grabbed the cameraman's ass and then... Here comes Candace jumping into the conversation. So, the funny thing about it is, Candace has the same problem that they're putting on Monique. Can't control her emotions, unpredictable, volatile. It's just Candace is manifesting her mouth and Monique's manifested physically but it's the same gene. Because what I've realized is when Candace is upset or doesn't like someone, she makes it a point to dig at them or to talk out of turn. This was Ashley's whole setup. It wasn't even a group discussion. Folks were not even chiming in. Here you come with the slick ass mouth chiming in. Now I'll say this, it's great for TV, right? It's great for TV. It made for things interesting. It gave us conflict. It gave us something to watch. It started confrontation. And it's great for TV. But let's remove TV for a second and talk from a real life perspective. Like, it really is some mean girl shit. And what I'm not understanding about all these ladies, and Monique included, they all... They all do to one another what they're accusing the other of. Y'all all doing it at this point. Um, and it's just... Honestly and truthfully... They really are going to have to let go one or two of these women and bring on two more new women. Because if not, there's now been a monopoly on emotions. There's been a monopoly placed on emotions. You've got this side over here who was hell bent about not liking this side over here. And I just don't think that anything y'all do from an ensemble perspective is gonna either A, come to fruition or be genuine and authentic enough to put on television. Like, what does, uh, uh, hell, the, the only most neutral party in this entire situation is Wendy. So what does an event now look like <clears throat> that Wendy throws and everybody has to come to? Like, what does that now look like? And, and we can't go an entire season with, I don't know, y'all. This, this has been, a, while it's been entertaining, it's been a very exhaustive um, season. Um, Karen going to Siri and um, 
Karen going to Siri. I liked when they showed Karen going to Siri and they talked about it in Giselle and Ashley said they got a chance to see the real Karen and not the grand dame. And yes, Karen does put on this grand dame facade. I imagine living in Patanka as long as she did being in those circles. That's just the way, and Karen's a little older, that's just the way people did it. That old Southern Belle thing, you know, you a whole closeted alcoholic, your husband beating you, your kids on crack. But you come to work, you come out, you show up at the debutante balls and at the, the, the women's league events and you just got it all together. Like Karen is from that era and of that mindset. Um, I loved how Andy called Karen on her just being full of shit. Because Karen, you do use a sea of words. But Karen don't want to... Karen don't want to answer something. She will dance around something and baffle you and cook shit. And you be so damn confused by the time you finish talking to Karen. And I think that be her aim. Uh, Karen said that she wasn't necessarily being the real her because she felt her parents were watching. I mean, I guess we have seen, you know, a, a, a more intimate side of Karen this season. I, I hope that she can find the comfort to kind of drop down, drop down the whole, oh, I have to be this to be that and be a real person like she was when she was drunk. Um, and talking about bailing Ray out. Um, all that stuff about Ray's penis and dick. It just was a little much. I wish Andy wouldn't have even gone there. Um, I mean, and let's face it. Let's be real. It, 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 uh, let, 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 let's be real here. Let's not pretend like it's far-fetched or unreasonable for somebody to not want no 70-year-old dick. I think it's natural. I think it's a natural progression. Like, I love you, but you're not physically sexy anymore with a shriveled up, gray hair filled dick. Like, that probably don't really work that good no more. I don't think there's nothing wrong with just acknowledging where we're shit. Uh, women at a certain point, it, it, it get full of gray hair, stringy like cotton candy, and it dry up. Don't nobody want that. Don't nobody want no dried ass raisin. Um, so, you know, like, uh, I don't think more stank need to be put on it than required. Um, they get to talking about the women's change in status or whatever and Monique goes you know this little check ain't doing nothing you know Monique this um, you catch a very bad rap for being braggadocious you do um, and the way you answered that question while it may be true it was very braggadocious and it felt very intentional. And I think that's why a lot of people sometimes have a hard time connecting with you sometimes because the things that come out your mouth do come out like a dry brag. Um, that definitely was a dry, it was a dry brag and low key it was an insult to Bravo and Andy because it was like this little check, you dismissed it. Like, cause it's not a little check. It's actually a big check that a lot of people would give their left kidney to have. Uh, please reference Nene. Please reference Sheree. Please reference those that have had it. Um, I mean, granted, it may be a drop in the bucket because of who your husband is, but I don't know. It just, it just, it was, it, it put a sour taste in my mouth. Oh, my husband's investment portfolio. He's made very, you know, his portfolio. This little check. It, 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 it definitely, if, if I was one of the producers, I'd definitely be feeling like, oh, bitch, but this little check your ass must don't need is skedaddle, in which you don't. Um, but it did come off very braggadocious and put a very nasty taste in a lot of people's mouth. Um, and it's weird, right? Because one should not have to downplay themselves in order to make other people comfortable because I'm struggling with that now. You know what I'm saying? Like, people feel a way because I'm living the way I live and you know I allow the world to share in that and it makes some people uncomfortable and, and I struggle I was like okay well should I should I uh should I have to downplay what I'm doing to make other people comfortable and 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 and, and the answer is no there's a quote that says uh upgrade your friend circle so your accomplishments don't feel like bragging um and that's what I've kind of had to do um, I'll tell y'all about that later. Anywho, stop bragging, Monique. That's the short of it. Um, so they play Monique's package. Then after Monique's package ends and they flip to Andy, here come Candace. Oh, what a victim. 
And here's the question that I have for Candace and the Candace following. I understand everything that happened. I understand she was traumatized. I understand. I need to know now what the ask is. Like, what is the ask at this point? What's the expectation? What is it that you want from Monique? What is it that you need from Monique? Because I'm going to tell you something. A large part of it truly does feel like you love her and that you loved her. And I always tell people hate and love is the same emotion. Hate and love is the same emotion, just in a different direction. In order to hate somebody, you have to love them. And just the amount of emotional energy that Candace puts into the daggers and the, the, the remarks and just the going on and on and on, it suggests I need something from you. I need a hug to make this pain. Sis, I, you're the missing key to making all of this go away. I need this back. Like, that's what I'm getting from. Because at this point, I just don't, you know, it, 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 it just bothers me. You would think that Candace would have been the one who would have taken the attitude of, I'm going to ignore this troll. I'm going to ignore this bitch. But here's my thing. If that was not the road you're going to take, and if the road that you were going to take is, I'm going to talk slick to this bitch. I'm going to throw all the darts and shit to this bitch. I'm going to talk reckless to this bitch. Then I'm going to need you to not be crying. Like, like it, you're confusing me. And I just, it, it's, it's not only confusing me, it's confusing everybody. I don't understand how on one hand you talking shit and you with this rah, rah, rah. And then on the right, you traumatized and you crying. And, you know, uh, so, some people would suggest you crying for sympathy or you're acting. I don't believe you're that good of an actress. I don't. I truly believe you're broken and you're fucked up. And, and you're crying for real. I'm just trying to get to the why. Because I want that healed up. Like, I want it healed up for you. And I want it healed up for us because we're tired of it. I saw a meme that said... And the meme was... And it said, entire recap of RHOP this season. And it's Candace crying. It's such an applicable meme. It's, it's, it's the entire recap is Candace crying. I'm not going to harp on it. But correct me if I'm wrong. I think any reasonable person at this point can feel like, girl, you got to move on. You got to move on. And if you can't move on, you got to find a way to push on, sister. Like, you need to call on the ancestors. Call on Harriet Tubman. Call on whoever you got to call. Call on your mama. Call on the Lord. You, you buddy, buddy with Giselle. Have Jamal Bryant pray for you and put some bless oil on your forehead and put and post some in your tear ducts. So then you can turn into New York Tiffany Parlor and it could be an internal cry. But girl, there's you did. I got no more tears to cry. There should be no more tears left for you to cry, Karen. I mean, uh, 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 Candace and Anita Baker. And there'll be no more tears for you. So when you say that you're leaving and you walk out my door. Yes, y'all don't know about that, Anita Baker. I can truly say to myself, you cannot hurt me anymore. Play no more tears, Anita Baker. The, all the old school hoes that wear slips know about no more tears. Um, let's get let's get to this fight. This is the last thing I'm gonna say about it because I'm exhausted about it. Monique, um, I got I gotta call you to the carpet on some shit. Your uh, your account of that fight was some bullshit. Um, and it really felt like you reverse engineered your answer to fit the footage that was played. The whole, I only hit her because she did this. In my mind, I only hit her and then I was holding her because she was throwing pieces of glasses. And look at the footage. You can see her doing like this with the glass. Now, and here's the thing. I didn't think none of what Monique said was true and then Bravo clipped in the footage. And Candace did do this at some point, and the glass was in her hand. But I am willing to put my life on the line and say, when 
Monique was in the midst of that fight with Candace, you didn't have no idea that glass was in her hand. You reverse engineered that answer to fit your narrative because it was too much commotion going on. It was too much and I, I've been in fights and when you black out, you don't pay attention to petty details. Number two, this whole thing, what it was, that, that's not what triggered you. What triggered you was, it was this little young bitch over here talking shit and you wanted to whoop her ass because she was trying you, all right? But to, 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 to kind of like, ease the severity of what happened off of you and reverse engineering that answer. It was, nah, girl, that's some bullshit. You went back and you saw that footage and you was like, oh, okay, I can use this. And look, she got the glass, I'ma say that. That ain't what happened, girl. That ain't what happened. You just had had enough, your emotions boiled over and you wanted to whoop her ass. Candace could have blew her nose and you was gonna pop her at that point. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's that on that. Nevertheless, um, it looks like season three is really going to be where it's at. Um, I want to say this, though. And let's talk about this. Drop down in the comments. Which it is, Do y'all believe that Giselle them were at that baby shower and plotting this whole trainer, baby, Sharice, Monique cheated rumor? Do y'all believe it? I'm not gonna lie, I believe it. Well, I mean, there has to be a, a level of truth to it because Candace called Karen to tell Karen what them hoes was trying to do because it wasn't sitting right in her spirit. You see what I'm saying? They did try to do it and it just sucks that all of this took place when the people that you really need to be, the, 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 the person who really needs to be held accountable for a lot of this fucking commotion, in my opinion, is Giselle. It's Giselle. When they played back that footage, um, Giselle was the one running between Monique and Candace, and she definitely was the one who bigged up in, in the idea this whole Candace getting cozy, cozy, cozy with Sharice. That was Giselle that did that. Steady taking back that information. Oh, I want to point out one other thing, too, because I said this in a previous video. I will give Candace credit. Monique, you did overreact at that fire pit, at that fire pit situation at the house. You were looking for any damn reason. I'm not gonna say you were looking for a reason to argue. I'm gonna say anything Candace would have did was going to annoy you because you had unresolved emotions and feelings about what was going on in the background. And I wish that both of y'all would have really just talked about it. I wish you would have just said, you know what, Candace, like, I'm not liking this shit with you getting cozy with Sharice. What's up with that? I wish that y'all would have just talked about it before it snowballed into all of this because the way negative emotions work is that they create other negative emotions. And we've all been there. You be mad at somebody because, you know what I'm saying, they owe you money and they ain't pay you back. And then every, oh, for whatever reason, you mad at them. Then every little thing that person do get on your damn nerve. It didn't get on your nerve before. Look at that bitch. Look at the way she walked. What she said, that bitch thinks she all that. Look at that bitch. Look, you know what I'm saying? What she said, who she talking about? Oh, I thought, you know, it, it, that's how it works. And that's definitely what you were experiencing, Monique. Anything Candace would have did would have annoyed you because y'all were not talking about the real issues. Then sitting around, fool out loud in each other's face like everything is good. Then when a person takes a little jab, it was a little jab, but it felt like a big ass stab because you had all this stuff in stress in your chest that was right there on the surface. Candace and Monique's Fallout is the prime communication of, uh, is the prime example of poor communication. With that being said, let the moral of the story be: If there's somebody in your life you got some stress in your chest about, talk about that shit right now, for you end up fighting their ass and end up down to the jail. That's all I got. I ain't got no more for the Washington Housewives. After I go to Wendy's and get me a little piece of burger, and I call y'all hoes later. Bam.